Hello and welcome to Into the Light. I'm your host, Adina Movana. Today we have Layla Rose. Layla is an intuitive love mentor. She empowers successful women to manifest the love they desire. With over 20 years of experience, she combines spiritual wisdom with practical coaching to help break free from disempowering patterns and create authentic connections. I love that so much, Layla. Thank you so much for being here. How are you doing today? I'm so honored and excited to be here and talk about love and relationships. Oh my gosh. Me too, girlfriend. You have no idea. I'm, I'm in the thick of all of that stuff. And I was so excited that you wanted to talk today and record this podcast and this episode because I've been getting so into energy work and law of attraction and attracting our soulmate (laughs) journeys. And that's been like my last, I think like seven years since my divorce. So I was married. Some people know I was, I was married for 14 years and then I've been divorced for seven and I had like a five-year relationship also in that. So I'm doing all kinds of relationship work. (laughs) Okay. I I like it. Yeah, yeah. And so I love that you talk so much about the energetics, you know, you talk about manifestation and aligning and getting into our authentic self in order to heal and and in order to attract the that love that we that we desire. So yeah, tell me a little bit about what brought you into this work and why it's so important for you to be focused on love and romance and and all of this. Yeah, I was mostly coaching and mentoring executives, like, on, on work things, right. On, on purpose and career. And I started to notice that, you know, our worlds in mix, right. Our relationships really affect the way that we manifest everything Mm -hmm. because love is so important. We are social beings. And so I started noticing that there was just a lot of good information and wisdom and manifestations coming through for my clients And I have a very unique story of my own that propelled me to be, to move forward in helping people more just this way. Not that I don't talk about all the things when you coach and mentor someone, but yeah, it really, I was like, how did I never see this? (laughs) I did something unheard of and I'll share a little bit. Basically I was involved with a man who broke my heart many times over my lifetime And we ended up getting married. So it's a very, not the, not the norm and not expected. Oh, right. But it's the most beautiful thing. We've been married 11 years. We're very happy. And the journey that I went through, the learnings that I received from him, the good and all the bad and all the things were essential to my growth and who I am today. And so I teach exactly what I did from the day that I got tired of him (laughs) until the day he came back into my life. And then like a year later, we got engaged. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun story and it's not unique. And, but I think it's important. I think it's important for people to hear that it absolutely was not perfect. And there was a lot of work, not only spiritually, but humanly, like, the practical parts of going to therapy or talking to someone before we even reunite, like got to truly together because we knew we wanted to be together, but there was a lot of past there. So I have a very interesting story about all that. that led yeah, me that, to- yeah. That's so interesting because like you, you mentioned that you, you had this past and we, sometimes it's really hard to forgive the person that hurt us so much. Like, it's like, we have this, ideal version in our brain that we're going to meet the one and that they're never going to hurt us and that they're we're never going to feel abandoned or whatever and that that's how it's going to look like and I feel like so much of of the relationship especially the volatile ones that split up and come again it's like you each each time you're getting like wounded and your scar has to heal and then like you have to integrate into love again and it's part of this unconditional loving journey into unconditional love that so many energy workers and healers are talking about, right? It's like a very different journey when you've had, like you mentioned, you've had a lifetime of that person hurting you and hurting you. And then all of a sudden, that's the person you're married to. So yeah, tell me a little bit about how you're breaking down the misconceptions and and actually tackling the fact that our romantic relationships are really the source of our uh, deepest healing. I think 
overall in the spiritual community, there tends to sometimes be, I'm not going to blanket everything, but there's like a dismissal of our humanity. And what I mean by that is, oh, the ego death. Okay. Mm -hmm. There has to be a reason the ego exists. I love my ego. I think it serves my life. There's this like, oh, we need to be awakened. Okay. Awareness means what? Awaken means what? Like, what does that mean that you, I think there's this concept of enlightenment that diminishes our human experience. And my belief system, my spiritual belief system is grounded in honoring both sides of us, honoring the human, that your human ways serve you. And so do your spiritual ways. And you're here to experience both. You're not here to sit under a tree and meditate. Right. Yeah. You might as well be in spirit form and not be here. You're here to experience contrast. You're, exp you're here to, to expand your soul. And so I believe that that's one of the things that we need to be mindful of is this all or nothing spirituality way when I believe there's such a good balance, even though he was the love of my life. I had to have human boundaries and say no to love on myself, protect myself and move forward in my life. The way that it ended up, great, but I would have been fine without that. That's another thing. One of the misconceptions is that I, I don't believe we have one soulmate. Mm, I believe we okay. have soul contracts with several people, depending on the choices that we make throughout our journey. And so I don't believe that we just have one person. And I also truly and deeply believe that honoring both sides of you is so important with the human, the logical and the emotional and um, intuitive pieces of you. The one tip that I always give women is to, when you make those manifestation lists on who you want to be with, right? To manifest the love. I always say at the very top, write someone to grow with, someone that'll grow with me because that is the number one reason well, I won't say the number one reason people break up is because of that, but mm -hmm. spiritually and mentally, it is really important to grow equally with someone. Yeah, and that's so, so true. The time, so by the time he and I were on the last round of dating, I had about eight years of spiritual training under my belt. Mm -hmm. So I realized in a moment on a phone call that, wow, what's going on here has nothing to do with me. Because when things aren't going your way in a relationship, we tend to internalize it and say, is it me? Am I not good enough? Why won't he do what I want? Why? I know he loves me. I love him. Why is he not? Da, da, da. So we internalize it. And in that moment, it was like a flood of, of just knowingness that just knowing like, oh my goodness, this just isn't about me. Don't mm -hmm. call me anymore. It's fine. We're good. Let's move apart. Let's move on. And, and I did so. And it's those moments that shift the energy for manifesting because mm -hmm. you, I chose, I decided that I'm no longer available for this experience with this person. And I just moved on. I was like, okay, bye. Yeah. Like you said, this isn't about me and that you asserted a boundary, right? And and also, mm -hmm. as you were describing that early part of your relationship, I feel like it was it's a process of learning our healthy boundary process, right? That's a lot of coaches talk about that. And I think maybe in your 20 years of experience with coaching, that's what it's all that yeah. so much of the work is, is about that. And so yeah, and then also, like you said, feeling the ability to completely detach from the outcome, like, okay, then, like you said, you're not attached, you're willing to be in a let it go and let God type of state, right? So like, that's what you, that's what you're saying, that those moments coming together are what really allows us to energetically live whatever issues we might be dealing with, right? Yeah. And, and I think it's important to understand why we make the choices we do. Like, uh -huh. where, where am I choosing this and why? Because without awareness, you don't have choice. So you just keep repeating patterns. When you realize and you're aware, then you can make a different choice with either you decide to continue in that thing that's not working, or you decide to stand up and, and walk away. And it's interesting to talk about boundaries because I always get 
because I see things so energetically, I believe in energetic boundaries. Mm -hmm. Like it's this decision that I made inside myself that I'm not available for this, or I'm not available for that, or I am available for this. And it's not, it's not always, it's not always verbal or with people. I don't have to say like the universe doesn't bring me opportunities to really have boundaries with actual people. I just, mm. it, it just like kind of knows what I'm available for and not available for. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain, but I made decisions of how I want to be treated, how the world works for me. And so when you say boundaries, that's where I go. I was like, yeah, energetic boundaries. And I automatically connected to like, how do I honor myself? How do I show up? How do I expect to be loved on and how I love on others and how when people misbehave in front of me, how I can separate myself and just see and not internalize or personalize what they are doing. Right. Uh, so yeah, those are powerful things to embody for ourselves understanding what it feels like to honor in a moment, in a moment of something happening to you, right? And setting those, I'm not available for this. This is not going to happen to me. Right. You just choose yourself every time. Yeah, that's what's, that's what's so important. And what do you think? So how do we do that when we're confronted with our a partner or spouse or boyfriend, whatever it might be, but like, you want to have this relationship of unconditional love, but yet there's these almost like conditions that you're set, like your boundaries are being interpreted as a hostile act or they're put up and then they create a, it's almost like it's an attack or some kind. And how do we, how do we reconcile like, oh, I want to love you unconditionally, but yet I have these conditions. And it's almost like it's an ultimatum. Sometimes your partner sees it like, oh, do this or you're out. And then of course they get triggered. And then they're like, well, then I'm out because if you're going to give me an ultimatum, then that's not unconditional love. I've experienced a lot of that pattern happening. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Scorpio rising. So beware. I go very deep on everything. So my, yeah, my too, little intuition <laughs> and my ears are like, what exactly are you saying? <laughs> what is it? Right. But I think overall, right. I think overall, everyone wants to be loved. Everyone wants yeah. to show up as their authentic self and be loved for that. Mm -hmm. But until you master that love for you and you have this way of being that's like with or without him, it's harder to have those conversations because if I am not complete within myself, it's really hard to be neutral in the conversations with another person. So as an example, one of the things that I teach my coupled married or in a relationship clients to improve the relationship is, it's kind of like a coaching technique that you approach your a conversation in your relationship as you're going there to learn. So when mm -hmm. you set a boundary with a person and they become defensive they, they do that pattern that you guys are used to. You come from a place of getting curious. I'm curious to know, tell me more that these mm -hmm. phrases for you to understand why they're being defensive, because sometimes we assume we know you have no idea truly why they're being defensive, why they feel attacked, why they don't, they might literally not understand what it is that you truly want. And I think with relationships, coming to this place of feeling safe enough to be vulnerable completely and totally. And that's something that I value in myself is that I believe that vulnerability is a superpower and that no one can hurt me through my vulnerability. That's my superpower. That is love. And if I tell you something and I'm vulnerable with you and you use it against me, it's not going to hurt me. I just see you as and unfortunate. So I'm protected. I am loved by this universe. And if I, sh if I, if you have the honor of receiving vulnerable information from me and you do something not honorable with it, I did my part. I stayed in the energy of love, right? I lived this way. And so for me, I'm okay saying to my husband exactly how I feel and not feeling like he's going to stomp on me or get defensive and da, da, da. So coming from this place of being vulnerable and tell me more is very disarming 
with your partner. And it's a place of curiosity and understanding. And so it's a little bit of two things that happen there. Energetically, you're surrendering. It's like you're you're disarming yourself of the usual fight and interaction, right? Right. right. So that creates this neutral space and a loving space for this person you care about. When me and my now husband got first got back together, he fought differently than I. Like when we had arguments, it was I did not like the way his approach was. Over time, we worked together on, hey, like this is not a healthy way to have discussions. And let's do it this way. Because he was used to a different pattern with the person he was with before me. So it's it's so important that we understand ourselves, right? And that we know our needs and that we don't feel like we shrink when we show up authentically. So yeah, and I love that, like you said, getting into the state of vulnerability and that leads into all that authenticity moments with each other to create that mm-hmm. more solid foundation. And and then what you said previously, like don't make assumptions. A lot of times I think all of our misconceptions and our mistakes like to make assumptions about what the other person is thinking or feeling. That's all just part of like the projecting of what you're thinking versus what's actually happening so that you can get to that vulnerability and authenticity. So I just, I just love that. And tell me a little bit, cause I know you've been giving a couple stories about working with clients. So tell me how you work with your clients, where people are usually when they, when they, when they meet you and how, what kind of transformations yeah. are you getting when you're, when you're working with your clients to get their romance in, in order? <laughs> yeah. I, I always say I'm like the person you hire after therapy and maybe before matchmaker. Oh my God. I love that. That's a sweet like, spot right there. You did some internal work. Now it's like, how do you move forward? Right. You've done some healing and it's like moving forward. And it's like, come get energetically aligned deeply. Uh-huh. You go date before yeah. you're out there. But I also work with people who are in relationships and want to improve that energy right. works wherever you're at. So I meet people where they at, they're at, but what's really important about when they come to me is that they realize that the journey to getting what they want is inside of them. Mm. It's this process of, I don't have the right skill set and tools spiritually or practically to move this forward. And so I need your help. Mm. And in the way that I help people, I mean, manifesting new love. I had someone that remarried their ex-husband It's been really beautiful to see how people have transformed into more confidence and strength for themselves and understanding of what they really want that naturally makes them a magnet for what they're looking for or need. Because I, I love the word man. I like, I don't mind the word manifestation, but I think it's like a process that you go do to create Mm. something. And I take the approach of, no, I want to teach you how to be a different way so that you are always a magnet for what you need, that you don't need to go write it 350 times, that you don't need to go do all these things. Now, they're great. Rituals are fun. Writing it down, like those things are important and I don't want to like diminish them, but I don't want more work, right? We're all busy. Can I just be a magnet for what I need? Can you teach me a way to line, Layla, mm-hmm. in a mm-hmm. way that I just, boom, it's coming. It's here. I'm done. Because you understand these three pieces that I teach on, which is mindset, divinity, and your energetics. Like if you understand those three pieces of you and how the universe hears you, you become mm-hmm. a magnet all the time for what you need. Okay. So through that process, I help people manifest new love, improve their relationship, definitely have saved some marriages there with the practical of what I just shared, right? About tell me more kind of communication styles and also going into deep meditations. I do guided Mm -hmm. meditations on healing old stuff from old relationships, healing old stuff in that relationship. Like, what do you need to move through? What are the conversations that need to be had with yourself, with spirit, with them? Right. So I hit all the practical magic of things, right? The practicality of NLP and my coaching Mm -hmm. training 
and also the spiritual pieces of your soul, your karma, your contracts with this person and how you can improve and have a better experience with love everywhere. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So you have your toolkit, like you mentioned, I guess you have different tools because I know I even saw on your website, like the 528 Hertz love frequency. Are you teaching <laughs> yeah. your clients like things that they can do every day? And then how long, how long does it take to, to that they want to be working with you to really see dramatic results? Yeah, <laughs> I have different ways of working with people. Mostly it's three to six months is my bespoke journey. And basically what I do when I meet someone, I'm, I say, okay, what are your challenges? What's going on? Right. And with that, I give them a reading. So the years of training that I had, I, my intuition, I am able to read energy, like why you are thinking the way you are thinking, why you're feeling the way you're feeling. I tune into what's going on for you. Why do, why are you not attracting what you want? What is in the way? And then I share that with you. And if it resonates, we make a plan. Here's how you shift these pieces. This is how you heal. This is the practical and the spiritual of taking care of this and understanding. Mm -hmm. And it's just a deep level of transformation beyond talk therapy or like Reiki or other modalities, because I believe in that three way system of shifting those three pieces of you in, in such a deep alignment that that, I mean, that's why we call it magic. Me and my clients don't know how it really works. Honestly, we, we, I'm like, I know my framework. I know what we're saying and doing, but the outcomes and the shifts are just, you can't explain that. I'm like, I don't know exactly what happened there, but here's the result of this conversation. Here's the result of taking this action. Here's the result of you thinking a different way. And can we talk about belief systems, right? right. Like, where, what do you believe? Where did this come from? How do you, mm -hmm. is this true for you? Do you want it to be true? You have mentioned to me your, your Muslim background, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's going, it's really being aware of what you learned. If you still believe it and what do you want to keep and what do you want? What else is available to you? Right. right? Mm -hmm. We get to choose to believe something else more aligned to who we are today. Right? Yeah, totally. We're always connected to divinity. We're always connected to our soul and our spirit. That's it's impossible to, div to divide, but we get to choose what we believe because what we believe creates our experiences. So if I believe love is hard and, oh my God, dating is a nightmare, blah, blah. To be honest with you, the energy of dating, no matter what's out there has not changed. People are getting married every single day. People right. are meeting people every single day, but the internet, the access we have, the 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 complicated dating advice all this stuff is so <laughs> just making it really complicated instead of can i just put my energy and intent out to have meaningful connections and i did i want a meaningful connection i want to feel this way i want to experience this i hear all the noise and what other people are experiencing but for me i understand how energy works and if i get caught up in all that i'm gonna get that so, so I, attract. yeah, so a little bit of that law of attraction, right? What you believe is possible for you and what's out there is what you're going to experience. And that's the thing I always try to get through to every single person I work with. One of the first questions I ask is, do you believe you're powerful? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that you're a co-creator of your experience? Right. And if that's a no, we're going to have some problems because <laughs> I need you to believe that like love is not this passive thing right and it's not our fault that we think that way like society and all these movies and these ideas of love it's like this, it's loopy, <laughs> this loopy like magical thing that we're supposed to experience and there is definitely magic and real deep love but this loopy passiveness that's that's what I don't like the passiveness of like it just hopefully I'm at a bookstore and I grab the book and he grabs it and oh my god la 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 right <laughs> we're waiting for these moments when it's more about like how do I love myself what do I believe is available for me mm -hmm. it's not in some religious ways it's like oh is god have someone for me mm -hmm. well, have you told god what you want have you understood who you are and named your needs and how you want to process. And the number one 
thing that I talk about. I always say number one, but I think they're all important. But the worthiness piece, like some people have love and some don't. And we don't treat it like a career. Like if, if, if you want a career, you go and do all these things to get one, right? But with love, it's like this passive, oh, I hope I receive it. Mm-hmm. So worthiness is so important because if you, I can do all the mindset work with you. I can teach you all about energetics. But if you don't believe that whatever higher power you believe in believes you deserve the love, you may have a little block there that we have to work through. For whatever reason, you don't feel like that higher power wants you to have it, that you deserve it. That gets in the way. That's a little bit of religion, teaching and belief system that we can unhook from and be like, wait a minute, I'm completely worthy. Yeah. It's like love and happiness. Yeah. It's like where it's too much about fear and guilt and shame. And you're just like in that for your religion versus in that state of worthiness and self-love and yeah moving moving through whatever yeah religious trauma might be there I think we're all we're all doing that and I really liked how you talked about how we have to pick the beliefs that we that stick with us and kind of shed away or deconstruct the things that don't serve us when we're in this process of self-love and it's like um, a lot of times our belief systems or religions like we have to go through it's like a sorting process. Like I'm going to keep this and this is serving me and this, these ones are not. So let's let it, let it all go. Right. (laughs) And that's, what's so powerful about coaching is like, you have this person asking you these questions you've never thought of. And you're like, Oh my goodness, I didn't even know I believe that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, the, to be, I don't want to be boasting here, but having a intuitive psychic coach, I know just what to ask because I already know kind of the answer. Right, right. I kind of know what's there, but I want you to see what's there because me telling you is not going to help you. So it's like, hmm, what is this here? Let's Mm -hmm. let's look into this little piece here. What is that there that you're believing, you're thinking, you're sitting with? And is that true? Do you want to hang on to that? And then shifting that with learning about energy because I have a huge huge background in the way that I see energy about there's love and there's fear Mm -hmm. and everything you do, everything you say is rooted in one. Which one are you rooted in? Mostly all the time. Are you intentional with where you're rooted, right? If you're making decisions on, like if you take a job because you're scared, that's the message you're putting into the universe. If you take a job because you lo- you, you're in love and it's good for you and all these things, it's a different energy. And so in our actions really speak loudly. So yeah. yeah, we talk a lot about understanding what energy is because I don't, I don't hear it out there very much, especially with this, this information out there about the divine feminine and the masculine and all of that. Ooh, yeah. that is getting wild I haven't been out there with like my opinion (laughs) well I want to yeah because I wanted to ask because I I know that it's great you have a system and it's practical and very rooted and when people come to you there's there's something tangible but then a lot of times yeah people are very confused about what's going on energetic with energy work and astrology and because I know you mentioned earlier you don't believe that there's just one soulmate or that we have us or that people can have come to you and understand like what their soul contracts look like or who their soulmates are. Right. So yeah, tell me, tell me about what your take is with like the twin, the twin flame journey or the divine <laughs> masculine and all, yeah. all this stuff that people are talking about right now. <laughs> I always think, okay, if I was single today, yeah, what would I do? Like, cause my, I have single friends and it seems wild. Right. It's and wild, I'm on that yeah. side of TikTok, you know? Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, what would I do? And I was like, exactly what I did 10 years ago. I stopped dating men that I knew were not the one and not giving me what I want. Right. That was the number one thing. Cause I caught myself doing this one thing where I'm like, well, maybe why don't you yeah. da, 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 and like compromising. And it wasn't this human, you're not giving me what you want, what I want. It was this practical love for myself. See, it always right. comes back to you. Wait a minute. I'm not getting what I want. So I'm not going to stay here. It's very easy, but it's hard to do because we as women, we're always, I'm not going to say everyone, 
like we compromise, like we're like, maybe, and we're always trying to save someone and all these things. I am the one to change him. I went through that with my, I am the one to force him to commit. Yeah, I am. the one, And it's like, what? So I really backed up and did a couple of things. And I stopped dating men I knew weren't the one. And I took time, wasn't very long, to just really get clear on how I wanted to experience love. And I was very, I'm a very not non-specific manifester. Some people are like specific, like it's important that they say exactly what they want. I'm mm-hmm. not like that. The mm-hmm. more specific I get, the more limited I feel. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> easier for me to say, hey, universe, this, these are the things that I want in a relationship. Yeah, You take care of the rest. I trust you to know me well enough to fill in the blanks. This is how I want to feel. And so that's even something important. Like yeah. I, think I have this whole theory about manifesting styles. I don't think everyone manifests the same. Right. I think that we all have our unique way. So understanding your pattern, think about every time you've manifested something, what was the process you went through inside of yourself? For me, it's usually there's some big moment. I get very upset and I make an internal decision and I get really courageous and I burn whatever it was down with either it's a job and then within a week, within days, everything changes. But getting myself to that point is something I've worked on because I want to manifest in a way where I don't have to get really upset or create some event, right? Which there are, there's different buckets in our life, like money and love. I mean, work and money and love and relationships and health. And so we kind of usually, usually people have one or the other mastered they have all the money and all the career and then yeah. they're like, no love or it's the like health is down. Like it doesn't. And I think there's something in us that we don't deserve it all for some reason. You can't have it all, but mm. you absolutely can. Right. Yeah. So when I think about things in the spiritual world about feminine and masculine, we have to be really careful because energy is so the way, let me explain it this way. So In my body, in your body, the left side of your body, I was trained to know that it is my, my moon side. It is the intuition. It is the dark. It Mm -hmm. is mystical and all the things that are unseen. It is the being the right side of my body is the sun. It is the doing. It is the practical. It is the human. So we run energy. Just think about light. Like this is light. This is shadow. This They work together. And so when people say, I need to be in my divine feminine because of this and that, like no one should be too high in the femininity and then really low in the masculine. Because then what are you doing? Are you just sitting on the couch all day, just being served? Like it's it's just the balance of being and doing, of shadow and light, of moon. Because see, if the moon and the sun weren't aligned in a certain balanced way, it wouldn't work. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I think about the energy of Mm -hmm. masculine and feminine. I don't know who decided to make the moon darkness feminine. Yeah. And masculine. And so we, I'm going to say something. It's almost patriarchal, patriarchal. Am I saying that right? (laughs) Yeah. Patriarchal. Um, Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. To label these things gender specific. Right. Well, it's it's interesting because in 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 uh, Islam, I think it's I some I've always been confused because also Shem's the sun is also a feminine word. So there's some yeah. different different mm-hmm. traditions where the sun is feminine and not only masculine, but yeah. but in like our spiritual you, humanity, it's all yeah. If you take the gender part out of feminine and masculine, think about it. We decided that this is feminine, and we as humans decided what's feminine. Mm-hmm. When did that happen? How did that happen? So yeah. you're telling me cave women weren't hunt like they weren't doing like when they weren't having babies. Yeah, they, they were, were hunter gathering. Yeah, <laughs> they were just laying around being worshipped. Like yeah. it's not. I am all for balancing out the way women are treated in the world. Absolutely. And when people say being your divine feminine, I am so okay with that. If it's not talking about energy, 
if you're not talking about, I'm going to be so much in my intuitive self and so much in my being that I'm not going to honor the doing, the Mm. structure, the human, because think about it. If I said that the sun sign is your human side, then if you're only being feminine, you're not honoring your humanity. Right. Right. So it's not balanced. You're all love and light. (laughs) Yeah. See, right. You're all love and light. So (laughs) what's your human doing? You're, you're, you're literally (laughs) denying a piece of you. So this narrative about enlightenment and all these things, I always kind of like went back up a little bit. I'm like, well, yeah. Like then how are you experiencing your humanity and enjoying life and desire? And I believe every piece, like why would the universe put it there if it wasn't for my good? We decided that the ego is bad. We decided that darkness is bad. Shadows are bad. Like humans decided what's good and bad. Mm -hmm. And what if we started not believing that and we started seeing things as neutral because the universe sees things as only shadow and light and shadow is needed. And it's an important part of us. There's these concepts that on the practical side, like battle depression or battle your anxiety. And there's all these war on drugs. and, And it's like, okay, like that's a dismissal of the shadow, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, okay, how do we love on this problem? How do I love on my depression, right? It is telling me something. Why would I want to drown it out and treat it like a battle that I'm fighting with myself? What if it was a piece of me needs my love right now? I'm Mm -hmm. sad. A piece of me is very anxious because I'm worried. A loving way of addressing these things in ourselves. And I know I've answered that so deeply, but I have to also hit on this twin flames thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's important because you're talking about how we're all these you know, concepts, doing this right? work. Yeah, shadow work, healing. And I love it. Awakening. It lights me up. We can talk for three days about all this stuff because yeah, I totally. find it so fascinating. Because, yeah. okay, one, one, one content side note. I learned all my spiritual knowledge on the ground, meaning like, Online wasn't a thing back in 19, in, in the early 2000s. I was at yeah. psychic fairs. I was, uh-huh. I would get healings in a hotel room from like a random lady that like I found somewhere. So I went to this on the ground kind of training, right? And so when I entered the online space in about 2018, I was like, wow, this is different. And so my learnings are just different. And my belief system that I was taught and understand is different. When it comes to twin flames, what I was taught that was that a soul splits into two and then they go and have their own separate lives and many, many lives. And each time they come together, they can't rejoin. So it causes friction. And so I don't, I don't think I believe that our souls can, can split into two. That doesn't make sense because to me, our soul is a piece of our spirit that houses our experience here on earth. So if you think about it, if you die, when you die, your soul goes back to your spirit and your spirit rejoins the collective. So you are an individual, but you're also all one. That's why we're all interconnected. So the whole spirit can't be here because it's too much. And if your whole spirit is here, then why are you here? I mean, you'd be in divine light and all, like it wouldn't work. So yeah, a, just piece, a fractal. A piece, yeah, yeah, so just a piece of you comes here and has a human experience and like, then you bounce out and you're like, what the F was that? And then you're looking down like, oh man, that was rough. <laughs> That's how I always envision it. My soul's like, oh, are we yeah, like a, video, a video game. game. <laughs> yeah. do, do, do. So, I don't know how a spirit, like a a soul can split, but here's the thing. And I want everyone to truly internalize this. Like, again, how does it serve you to believe that you have a twin connection with someone because you're a little obsessed with them because there was a little toxic relationship? Like, how does it serve you? So everything in the spiritual world, I always ask myself, okay, if this is true, how does it serve me? Do Mm -hmm. I want to believe this? Right. And so if I encountered something that was like a twin flame, I would be like, okay, my, my, my tools still apply. Is this Mm -hmm. good for me? Is this healthy? Right. Is this the experience I want to have? 
And I am so big on, like, I love astrology. I love human design, but I believe yeah. that energy and my power is the ultimate power over my life. Mm-hmm. I don't care if Mercury is in retrograde. It is what I decide to have to, to experience. So for me, that it doesn't work. I'm not having Mercury mess my stuff up, right? I Now, I, I believe that, that my planets can still affect my life. But I believe that I have choice on how okay. much, how far, how deep, right? Yeah, and yeah. The more you no, believe that Mercury is in retrograde and your ex is going to come back and you're going, your phone is going to die. The word happened, yeah. The <laughs> word happened. Because who is the ultimate power? You, you and God. So when you believe something, God's like, your wish is my command. Your wish is my command. Oh, so you want to believe this? Okay. And so my husband's a therapist, and I. He's definitely not as spiritual and woo as me, but he's open and we have conversations. And I, I, I tell him, how can energy not be real? And I say this, how do let's, I'm a woman, let's say, and I'm always dating alcoholics, let's say, and I don't want to date alcoholics anymore. So I go to therapy and I talk about stuff and I start believing different things And maybe I go get some Reiki. I do some internal work of like, I decided I don't want to date alcoholics anymore. And by doing some stuff, all of a sudden I'm out in the world and I literally don't attract them anymore. (laughs) Like, how is that possible if energy isn't real? How did you have the power to think and believe something different and feel differently? And then you don't get the same experience. And that's transformation. The difficult part is really changing your belief system and what is available to you and believing that you're that powerful and that life isn't out to get you. Life is just giving you what you think and you believe, mostly what you feel, because what you think (laughs) goes into your body. I have a whole different theory about like the law of of attraction. Yeah. So the way that you think is important, but it's what you feel that pulses out into the universe and the right. universe comes Emotion. back. This is why you can do all the affirmations in the world and the mantras and all this thinking and da, 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 and your life doesn't really shift. It's because it's the emotion. You have to convince your body that it's safe, that you're worthy of receiving what you're saying. Right. That it's yeah. true for you. And that takes a little bit of practice. And depending on what works for you, are you auditory? Are you visual? How do you get your whole being to believe something new and see your power? And I, every client I've ever had, I have them look back on their life and I prove to them how powerful they are. And I prove to them how we're always trying to know how we're going to have everything work out for us. And the truth is you didn't know how you even got here. So why do you expect to have the exact steps to get to the next place? You just do what you know to do. You feel good. You align yourself. You believe you're worthy. You you make that you're worthy. You align yourself with who you are and what you desire and things start to change. So I get very passionate because I think everyone needs to hear this. And it doesn't matter what belief system you're in. I work with Catholics, whatever, like every single type of religion. Yeah, yeah. And well, I like, I like yeah. what you said because yeah, you don't get swat, swat, you don't have to get so swept up in like the rabbit hole of twin flame or spirit. You just you just have to do these basics and understand it, and then you can come from any religious, like you said, Catholic or whatever your clients might be. And I really like how you framed it because I know a lot of Muslims are struggling with like, okay, we we know astrology, like there's a chapter in the Quran about the moon and the stars, but like, but then all of you're not, but people don't like to touch any of the tarot or the anything that's like witchcraft or anything. But like you said, it's like, it doesn't matter if Mercury's in retrograde, like we are, we're here, we have free choice and we're directing this. And that's what, that's what Allah and God wanted us to know about these things anyway, in the first place, right? That they're real. Like you said, how does anyone believe that energy is not real? Well, it's like, yeah, of course it's real. It's just, it's not so woo woo anymore. We're like, we're just yeah. practically integrating it and all the religions have to come up to speed and everything has to come up to speed with this. I recently, <laughs> I recently did a workshop and I was saying that like God, the entity, whatever higher power you believe in 
what if the system that was created to the for the universe to function is energy, right? So like when I say the universe, that's what I mean, the system of energy that Stars, God created yeah. this neutral system of shadow and light and gave you free will and said, go have fun, go learn, go expand, go choose love. And I think somewhere something got miscommunicated and humans decided what's bad, what's good, what's right. right? The, ego, the ego got involved. The patriarchy started getting, <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what went wrong or what happened, or maybe this is just part of the experience. Maybe this is the contrast that we are to experience such a in, intense, such intense energy on what we're not. That's going to force us to find who, what we are. Right. right? That's, that's how people also manifest change in their life. We aren't taught we are taught that, oh my, oh, another, oh, this is so good. Another contra thing that I have is like this whole night of the soul that everyone, when they awaken, it's just it's horrible. Their whole life falls yeah. apart. And my training was, oh, you can grow in, in struggle and you can grow in love and expansion. Mm. You get to choose yeah. how you grow. But we as humans are taught you got to work hard. Gotta, you gotta yeah, sacrifice. it's going to be, it's gonna be yeah, like this. Horrible. If, if it isn't horrible, you won't learn. And I'm like, no, I learn from watching others. <laughs> That's me too. I, I, I like, I like, to, I don't have to, have to get. <laughs> I don't need to go through that experience to know that that sucks. Yeah. Right. I do not subscribe to that. And that's why my, my ways of coaching and mentoring are very simple and because I don't want to comp complicate it. I remember um, a client once told me, I love working with you because it doesn't feel like what she said, like, like my soul is being drowned. I was like, what? Ah. and she's like, yeah, there are other spiritual people. They're just so serious. And it feels like my soul is being invaded. And it's just so, so, so heavy. And I was like, She's like, I love getting these results with this lightness and ease. And oh, oh my goodness. That's <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Because yeah, there are a lot of we hear about spiritual bypassing and narcissist, spiritual narcissists. I mean, we got all kinds of things yeah, we can talk about. Yeah. But yeah, I oh my gosh, I know we're going we're going way over time. But I love this conversation, Layla. And I think it was great. We, just, we, we went into so many different areas. And there's so much more I could have talked to you about like with your system and how you're all of the all of different soul contracts that we're dealing with and everything going on spiritually, yeah. astrology. I mean, we had so many different areas to talk on. And yeah, I just loved it. I feel like we got to learn so much about your work. And I'm so excited that you have your one on one work that you do with your clients to help get them you have I think a, your programs. And so where can people go if they're interested to learn more if they want to find you where's the best place to to reach out? Yeah. So my website is LaylaRoseCoaching.com yeah. and I'm on Instagram at Layla Rose, your coach. And all those places have my links. If they're interested in working with me, I have an offer right now. It's a VIP love transformation experience. Basically and it, it's a, like a good reading, like a good energy reading on what's going on for you. And then I spend two weeks giving you voice support. So basically I do a diagnostic on the first call and see what's going on. See what your soul says to me, what you need to know in this moment. How do we move you through? And then two weeks of supporting you through what we spoke about and supporting that work that needs to, the internal shifting that needs to take place. And then we have another 30 minute call to check in on the wins and, and see the progress and talk about next steps. So yeah, I have that one out right now. And okay. yeah, and then my three to six month bespoke. And that one's, it's weekly or bi-weekly. And we'd have a conversation about how to do this journey. Yeah, get through all this stuff. And I love mm -hmm. it because I think we, so many of us need support. It, I know our our friends or family are, are not always the best source when it comes to relationships. Yeah. And, and you um, know, it's one not, <laughs> I promise, it, like it's not hard and it doesn't take forever. People mm. get I mean, I've had just readings and people get results mm -hmm. over a weekend. People get changed they, and then they come back and sign up. So it's very interesting how quickly, because you're so powerful. Mm -hmm. And then when I tell you what your soul has said to me and you're like, oh my God, you choose with that awareness, something different and you experience something different quickly because you're that powerful. 
And the universe wants to love on you and support you. They want you to believe good things so they can just hand you things. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Well, I know. And on that note, I mean, any final thoughts or I, I used to share so many different stories and tidbits here, any final thoughts or words of wisdom you'd like to leave the audience with before we wrap up? I think that was my final thought. Yeah. Final thought about like loving deeply how powerful you are and understanding that if yeah. that's the only intention that you make in your life right now is like, universe, God, sources, angels, whatever you believe on, show me my power, show me, show me. So you can believe it so deeply that you just walk with that for the right. No one can convince me I'm not powerful. There's just no way. There's no way. I've, there's too much evidence. There's been too much evidence, too many things ha that have happened that are unexplainable, things that I want, things that I want to shift. It's just, no, there's just no way. And this is what makes me unfazed. I have this program. It's like, I want to teach people how to be this way. Unfazed. unfazed. Like no matter what happens outside of me, I am loved. I'm supported. Things are going like, I don't the self-esteem is there. The confidence is there. Now I'm not perfect. Of course I'm human, but it doesn't last very long because that core is so foundation rooted in love. And that beliefs that the universe loves me and supports me, that God wants me to have everything I want. I love it. Yeah. Unfazed, unbothered. Un, 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 yeah. <laughs> get what I want. Yeah, get, get what you want. Manifesting, attracting. Yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Layla. Thank you so much. I, I learned a lot today and I'm sure our audience did as well. So if anyone has any questions, wants to reach out to Layla, we'll have those yeah. links listed underneath in this episode. Yeah. DM me on Instagram. <laughs> DM me. I love yes. Instagram DMs. I, I get so many questions there. I'm like, yes. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> amazing so yeah really me too that, instagram that. yeah awesome yeah. instagram is great and yeah so let's let's reach out and hopefully we'll have you again soon Lele. it was great talking to you today i loved it mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you so much have a good day bye-bye